All right. The wait is over. Hello and welcome to Vibe This Chess Hub. A very good evening. It is a lecture for the under 1400 guys. Well, I hope that you have your notepad ready because we'll continue our uh, series on opening pitfalls. And today we are going to study four important chess traps with the names. So that is why I insist that you have your notepad ready. A big hello to Rayansh. Big hello to Arya. And uh, Purvesh is here. Well, Saumitra is saying that he's here because he'll spend time until 6.30. Because he's going to play a tournament at 6.30. Well, okay, fine. No problem. But uh, see to it that you don't intrude in the answers uh, rally or marathon. Because you are over 1400 certainly and uh, Ruto is here as well well big hello to you and uh, hopefully you are ready with a notepad because in about a couple of minutes we'll start with our work and uh, remember we probably will uh, of the four we'll start first with the trap for white which you can use against black and the next three will be traps for black. Well, that's going to be interesting, is it not? That's very interesting there. That is going to be one awesome thing. So, I'm saying that the, we are going to go through four traps. And that's the least, okay, in the next hour. I'm saying that's the least. We expect, well, if there is time, we could go and deal with some more points. But at least the four traps. And we have to jot down the moves as well. That's why I insist that you have the notepad. I'm saying it again. Now we are in 2021. As promised, we have batch-wise lectures. So it's the second lecture. Slowly but steadily, your notepad will, will be full of information and whatever it is that we do. And that shall serve as your notes. If there is something in June that we have to plan, well, this is it. With batch wise test in June. I think now it is safe to say that there is only a minute left. So we will wish Saumitra all the best for his tournament. Hey, Yatharth is here. Very, very good evening. Mohit is here. Good evening to you as well, Mohit. Wherever you are, I think Mohit, you are at your native place. But hopefully you are ready with some notepad or something to take notes. I repeat, we are going to do four traps. First is for white, while well, the other three are from black's perspective. And uh, of course, I will reveal their name as well. No problem, Saumitra. Well, post your score or performance on WhatsApp. Hey, Pooja ma'am is here. Hello, Pooja ma'am. Welcome to our lecture. I think, guys, it is time for us to start. Now, the first heading that you should take in your notepad is the legal trap legal trap that's our first game okay we're talking about game one and this is known as a legal checkmate or a legal trap please make a note of that in your notepad something that you must know these are some traps that you must be aware of as a, an under 1400 students focus on what you will learn hmm so I hope that you have made a note of this and now stay focused on the screen because I am now going to take you through the opening moves and tell you how what exactly happens. This is very important for you to learn because it is absolutely common. The game begins with e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6 and uh, then you have this typical bishop c4 move which is the italian game and black plays d6 so now you understand why i want you to study this because there are a lot of games i see under 1400 guys they employ this system as white e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 and black plays d6 defending the pawn it's a very very common idea I hope you are making note of the moves. 
e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and d6. Now, white here to set up the trap does not castle, although castling will be a perfectly reasonable and good move in this position. Here white does not castle. Since black has played this dubious move d6, by dubious I mean it's not very clear about whether it is extremely good or what. It's not very clear, so I say dubious. Because of this move, white will continue with his plans of knight to c3, getting the third piece in the attack. And now black thinks that I have to develop this bishop. That's why he played probably the move d6. And now he has played bishop to g4, which is pinning the knight. By the way, if you think that, sir, yeah, we have, I think we have reached that position where we can sacrifice straight away because this is uh, the, a hanging bishop on g4. So let's sacrifice and then get this bishop. Well, not quite. That will be premature. That sort of an idea will be premature. The reason is, if you now go ahead and play bishop takes f7, you cannot play knight g5 because your bishop doesn't support the knight on g5. Another thing is, if you go about playing knight takes e5 in this position, or black will play knight takes e5, bringing support for his bishop. So I repeat that you have to be careful here, much, much careful here. It is not just so easy, like you just sacrifice left, right, center. It's not going to happen that way, I assure you. You have to be mindful of such things. Now, if that is not what we are going to do, if that is not what, you know, is the sequence, then what is? We have to make sure that we chase the bishop away and make it a hanging piece where the knight cannot support it. I repeat what I said. Let's bring this bishop to a square where this knight here won't in any way be able to support it. And therefore, you can guess the move, it's h3. And it's very likely that black will just try to extend the pin. We all know that that's exactly what happens in the games, is it not? The players try to extend the pin. So here black will try the same. And now we have achieved our objective. Now this knight, well, there is no way knight will be able to... Oops, sorry. There is no way knight will be able to bring support for this bishop. I don't know why that arrow doesn't come that way, but anyway. Yeah, it comes now. There you go. So now that knight on c6 cannot render support to the bishop. And it is here that our trap starts. And we will make a move that is just stunning. It's a queen sacrifice. And the move is knight takes e5. What a brilliant move. You don't go knight g5, you play knight takes e5. Now chess with Prajna, why are you late? What happened? The point being, now you are attacking f7, you are attacking the bishop, you are attacking the knight even, but more importantly it is black's move. And black will immediately take the queen. It's a very, very intuitive sort of a move. Yeah, we are getting the queen. Let's take that. And now you have a simple checkmate that follows. The beautiful queen sacrifice that is made in two moves here. Just two moves and the game will be over. Bishop takes f7 check. Force move is king e7. And the reason why I'm saying force is because knight controls d7 there. And knight d5 is just checkmate. It was the 8th move in the game and it is checkmate. Move number 8. Imagine in some game that you are playing, you are able to deliver such a checkmate. Boy, you will be happy. Take my word for that. Boy, you will be happy. 
if on move number 8 you are able to inflict such a checkmate onto your opponent awesome now i have a question like how many of you actually have done this or tried this in any of your games if yes please type it in the chat but uh, do make sure that you make notes let me play this game one more time every time we'll play that game once it's done so that you are aware of what the moves are i'll dictate the moves e4 e5 jot it down fast i repeat e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 d6 by black here you shouldn't castle if black has played d6 you should just control your urge to castle which also looks like a perfectly natural move set up the trap with another piece in the game knight c3 if black has played d6 mind you i'm saying bishop g4 h3 just to drive the bishop remember the logic just push the bishop where where the knight on c6 cannot defend the bishop and mission accomplished then go for it knight takes e5 bishop takes d1 and a checkmate will follow now bishop takes f7 check force move king e7 and knight d5 is checkmate don't forget to write 1-0 Yatharth is saying that I have tried it. Prajna is saying my opponent fell for it. Uh, Rayansh is yet to try this against his opponent, but I'm sure that time will come. Wonderful, wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. And by the way, please type it in the chat if you are done writing the moves so that we can proceed to the next one. Is monitor with us? Monitor, I have a question. Which batch exactly do you belong? What's your batch? I be, I would like to believe that it is the above 1400, right? I'd like to believe that. Now from the next game, I'm going to flip the board because I said that the next three positions or games rather or the opening traps that I'm going to show you are from are for black you can try that against the you know players with white pieces all right then hopefully you are ready oh monitor is under 1400 okay so Prajna you are not the monitor Mo the proper monitor is the monitor here maybe I'll appoint some other monitor for the above 1400 batch I don't know no problem, Avdut. It is good to have you in this batch because there is some basic that you can learn and that will only help you propel yourself further. I have no doubt that you will excel. Monitor. Hey, Ankit is here. So let's get started with this. It is E4, E5. By the way, let me, ooh, as usual, I think we'll start with the name. It's Noah's Ark Trap. Noah's Ark Trap. It's game two for us. I've typed the name. This is Noah's Ark Trap. Please make a note of it very properly. Don't just jot down the moves. You should know what the games are. You know, those traps are called. Ankit, how's the weather in West Bengal? Over here, it's quite cloudy and it didn't. It, it did rain here, I'm telling you. Surprising, January 8th and it rained here this morning. How is it there in West Bengal? How's the weather there? Give us an update. Bondo Padde. All right, and now... Let us uh, see the next game. E4, E5. Knight to uh, 
Yeah, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5. You all know the name of this opening. Again, you will be happy. The reason why I'm sharing this with you, of course, is because it's very common kind of opening in your games under 1400 guys. Ooh, Ankit is saying it's warm in Kolkata. Oh, that's great for you. It is raining in Chennai, says Prajna. Yeah, it was raining here this morning. <laughs> no, these are untimely rains. Can't tell you. I don't really appreciate that. Not good. Anyway, for some people, they like this cloudy weather because they think that it's a big relief from the scorching heat. But hey, I like clear skies, I'm telling you. Rains are okay in the rainy season, man. The gloomy weather, not a big fan of that. Anyway, I hope that you are now continuing with this properly. It's Noah's Ark Trap. Starts with uh, the Spanish game here. The line is e4, e5. Knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop b5, a6. The bishop will uh, be challenged by the move a6. The bishop will go back and black plays d6. Guys, that's the, the thing, okay? So, the bishop will be challenged. Bishop will go back to a4. It's not the exchange variation. And then black plays d6. It looks perfectly harmless at the moment. Nothing really to worry. I know, I know. Non-seasonal rains, sure. So monitor, learn this trap. It is from the black side. And I'm, I have no doubt that you will really enjoy this. If you can put it to good use in your tournament games. White now normally goes for the center break. So he'll go d4. And once he goes b4, now your trap starts. Guys, I'm making it clear. Stay focused on this game here. We are not talking about the exchange variation. We'll deal with that. I think I dealt with it in the feedback. The bishop takes c6. Your e5 pawn does not fall because you play d takes c6. We covered that once in the feedback. I'm not going to talk more about that. Now, the center break d4 move is what you should wait for. And... And now, here you can start your trap with the move b5. It's a very nice idea. Just start with b5. This trap is set. Now, the way white will respond to that is obviously he'll safeguard his bishop. And now you take it with the knight. It's a very important thing. Let me show that with the arrow. You are going to now take with your knight. You are going to take on d4, not with the pawn. You want to set up the trap. You want to take with the knight. Okay. It's a very handy trap and it works remarkably well. I'll tell you why. Uh, you will rather see it for yourself. So yes, knight takes d4. Do you think that white will just tolerate that for nothing? No, white will seize the opportunity to just equalize very fast. Just brilliant. The queen has now come to the d4 square and uh, the things are looking great. Now, what is it that we can do? Uh, here... There is a move that you must remember, which is c5. It's a very, very beautiful move, c5, from c7 to c5. And please just look at how nice this move is. 
It's wonderful. You will, I am telling you, 9 out of 10 people will fall for this crap, man. You played properly, they will. Because white will not be able to resist a temptation of a scholar's mate and attacking a hanging piece together and will think that he is winning here. Okay? The point being that white will play the move queen to d5 and the threat is quite simple. Checkmate and also attack the hanging rook. And uh, I'm very sure now by this time you are wondering, sir, is this a trap for black or white? Because things are not looking great here. It's a trap, Preyansh. That's why we play c5. Don't worry about it. The pawn structure is okay because you are going to achieve something great with it. Watch what follows, Rayansh. What? Watch what follows. There are two threats here. There is checkmate threat. Queen takes f7 is checkmate. The other threat is queen takes a8. And yes, we are going to play the move that most of you have suggested. And the move is bishop to e6. Suddenly, the checkmate threat no longer exists, nor does the threat of queen taking a8 because now the queen has rendered support. The bishop has moved out of the way and there is suddenly panic in white camp. Suddenly, white's now thinking, oh, oops, what's that? What's that? What's just happened there? But white will have a trick up his sleeve. White will probably try queen c6 check because now you don't want to block it with the queen because yes, then your rook on a8 is hanging again. But guys, might be mindful of such things in the trap, okay? You don't want to block the check this time with the queen because queen takes a8 is yet another check. The way to do it is to bring the bishop back. So you just should play this bishop back to d7, making the queen move, queen goes back, and now this time you don't have to repeat. That's the thing. You don't have to repeat. You have a wonderful move here. And now, Rayansh, after this move, you will not wonder about the pawn structure. Because the super duper uber winning move is c4 and the bishop is history. Don't go for the repetition. You don't have to play bishop e6 here. Just play c4 and the bishop is history. And I bet after that move, you really wouldn't grumble about the pawn structure because white has just lost the bishop. It's a very important trap. Don't take it lightly. Don't think that, oh, so, oh, no, no, no. It is very important you know such things. And I'm going to, that's why the Batchwise lecture, the above 1400 also, we shared some nice tips yesterday. It will continue that way. So take your education very seriously. We now have started Batchwise lectures with a purpose, with an intention. Very important. So let us go ahead and replay this. I told you that every time we finish a game, we are going to replay. By the way, when I replay, make sure guys that you write down the moves in your notepad. Noah's Ark Trap. That was the name, you remember? That was the name. Game 2. This is for black. And now I shall say the moves. Call it dictation if you would. And please make sure that you jot down everything properly. e4, e5, knight to f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the Spanish game, a6, bishop a4. Don't push b5 immediately, okay? d6, wait for white to go for the center break. And the moment he does that, now you push the bishop back to b3 and now go ahead and take it with the knight. So then knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes and a very interesting move here 
is c5. What a beautiful move. White for some time will like, will, I mean, it's likely that he will think that, hey, I'm winning. It's a checkmate threat and I'm attacking the rook on a8. So this is clearly winning. For a moment, he will be happy. But the, the happiness will be short-lived. Bishop e6, queen c6 check. Again, be mindful. You don't have to block it with the queen. Otherwise, this queen takes a8 check. So bring the bishop back. When the queen goes back to d5, however, do not repeat. There is a simple move of c4, the pawn move, c4, and the bishop is history. Guys, please type it in the chat, uh, chat whether you are done writing with it or not. So now I'm sure, Rayansh, you have no comments about the pawn structure because now here you will win a piece for two pawns and it's the opening phase there is no way that black's not winning this unless black plays miserably post that but uh, it's a good opening trap prajna since you are here or maybe monitor is with us monitor just go ahead and type names of the first two games what was the first one legal trap and the second one is Noah's Ark Trap. You can look in the chat monitor and just type it. Game 1 and Game 2. Meanwhile, we are now all set to go to game number 3. And uh, the game number 3 is uh, a beautiful trap where you find that the knights take charge. So it's known as the Cambridge Springs Trap. I repeat. Cambridge Springs Trap. I'm going to type that. I think that's better. Cambridge Springs Trap. All right. Let me just type it in the chat. This will be game three. Cambridge Spring trap. Springs, okay. By the way, this one is also for black, I told you already. Now, the thing about this trap here is uh, you have to know some terminology. Spring is actually the night. Spring actually is the knight. Please remember that. That's another terminology. Well, in some cultures, knight is also called the dog. Did you know that? Please type it in the chat. Did you know that? In some cultures where chess is popular, actually the knight is the dog. <laughs> I bet horse is the better version. But anyway, a knight it is and a spring stands for the knight. So when I say springs, you are right. You guessed it right. It's the plural. It's the double knight thing. It's the double knight thing. Okay. So let's see how this unfolds. Okay. This trap. In this trap, you have the queen's gambit declined setup. So the way the game is played is d4, you play d5. Well, nine, eight out of ten games, you will have white playing c4, going for the queen's gambit. This is the queen's gambit. Instead of accepting it, e6 is the queen's gambit decline. So black is saying, if you take, I'll just take back and hold my center. That is very important. And after this, white plays knight to c3. Black plays knight to f6. So, so far, it's pretty normal. There is nothing extraordinary here. Let's look at the sequence again. d4, d5, c4. You don't accept the gambit. You play e6. That's queen's gambit declined. Then white plays knight to c3, black plays knight to f6. And now here is the interesting thing that will happen. 
is the bishop pin and then you play knight bd7. So what I'm saying is white plays this bishop pinning the knight. You don't play the bishop e7 if you want to go for the Cambridge Springs trap. You don't go for the bishop e7 which looks so natural. By the way, I didn't acknowledge the hello of new gamer. Please reveal your identity, new gamer. Where are you from? Vihang is uh, here probably, yes. And monitor is very surprised. Like, what? A dog? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we assume knight to be a horse, uh, very likely people can take it for a dog. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so don't go for bishop e7 here. It's a very important thing to note. You go for the move knight bd7. And that's the trap. And I'll tell you why that's a trap. The moment you play this move knight to uh, knight bd7, white will really be so happy. He will say, hang on, my pawn is attacking the pawn on d5. My knight is attacking the pawn on d5. And there is only one support here. Let's make this blue. And then there is only one support here. This knight here is actually pinned. So this knight on f6 is actually pinned. And so for some time, white is going to be really happy. Hey, Radesh Savan, he is that new gamer guy. What's up with the new ID there, mate? Huh? So white, I repeat, let's go in the game now. So white will be very happy here because he will sees this opportunity to win the pawn here and uh, the way it will be executed is what you definitely know it's just a simple exchange winning the pawn so it's uh, c takes d5 then it is e takes d5 then it is knight takes d5 and for the moment again you will wonder sir was this a trap for black or white what's happening here what's up it looks like black is under immense pressure here. What's happening here? Um, <laughs> okay. Now, the thing is, here, white has fallen for the trap, let me tell you. White has fallen for the trap. Congratulations. Successfully trapped. It, it doesn't look like it, but it is. Now look at the next move here. It is just awesome. Well, you will play, believe it or not, the move knight e4. Like what? Yes. You will play the move knight to... Oh, sorry, not there. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I beg your pardon. You will take the knight. You will take the knight. Beg your pardon. You will take the knight. Beg your pardon. You want to go knight e4? The knight's hanging. Take the knight. The knight's hanging. Take the knight. The knight is hanging. Don't go on e4. Correction. Big time. Knight takes d5. Now what's happening here? What's up? Bishop takes d8. And now bishop b4 check. Now this was something that we talked about in yesterday's lecture with the uh, above 1400 guys. It's lucky that the under 1400 also get to listen to this. Sometimes the points are the same. I told them yesterday that you should always capitalize on the lopsided development of your opponent. And so Amitra was the one to question like what, lopsided, what does that word mean? I clearly remember that. So here is yet another classical case of lopsided development. I saw which Samitra is here listening to this because he will say, yeah, absolutely, nailed it. This is again lopsided. White focused on developing the, the queen side so much that his king side has gotten completely neglected. <laughs> and now he will be forced to block the check with his queen. It's incredible. But this is the way it is. Lopsided development meaning development on only on one side of the board. So the king side is not. Even the pawn is on e2. Imagine that. Even the pawn is on e2. 
So pawns on e2, f2, g2, h2, the bishop on f1, knight on g1, rook on h1. So everything is just, it's just like that half has done nothing in the game since the game began. So you have to capitalize on such things, work in that area. Now white will block the check with the queen, which is like a forced move. What do you think here we do? Of course, we take the queen, right? That's very important. And the beautiful aspect here is that check comes first. That's another principle you probably can write in your notepad. The check comes first. So what is my point here? That white is in check. So the king has to take the bishop. It's, it's a check. And now you will have time with the king. You can just take the bishop. And now if you count carefully, black is a piece up here. Count it, guys. Count it. Black is a piece up here. This is just brilliant. Lead in development. Look at white's king side. And now I'm sure you understand why it is the springs trap. Because of the knight's movements there. Okay. So it's the springs trap. Beautiful indeed. Remarkable. I mean, I must say this is just beautiful. Always remember this. As usual, now what I'm going to do, guys, is we are going to replay the game. Monitor, go about typing the name of this trap. When I go back, we will replay this, okay? So let's go back. D4, I will dictate the moves, guys. D4, D5, C4, E6. D4, D5, C4, E6. Knight C3, Knight F6. Bishop G5 and Knight BD7. You play Knight BD7 here. It's a very important thing, guys. Knight BD7. You don't play bishop e7 here if you want to set up the trap. Let white think that he is winning the pawns here. So after knight bd7, it is c takes d5. Then it is e takes d5. I repeat, c takes d5. Then e takes d5. Then knight takes d5. And knight takes d5. So very important thing, knight takes d5 and you can put an exclamatory mark there. Knight takes d5 is exclamatory mark. I hope under 1400 guys, you know what is the, the meaning of exclamatory mark. It means it's an exceptional move. It's a very good move. In fact, for exceptional move, you can put double exclam as well. This is a nice move. Bishop takes d8 and bishop b4 check. Bishop takes d8 and bishop b4 check. Queen d2 to block the check. Bishop takes d2 check. Queen d2 to block the check and bishop takes d2 check. King takes d2 and king takes d8. King takes d2 and king takes d8. And clearly... White, a black, sorry, will be a piece up here. Let me know once you are done writing everything properly, please. Guys, make sure that you are writing everything properly. I am making it very clear that we are all studying this with, a, with an intention here. I want you to take things damn seriously. The next one, again from the black's perspective, It's known as the Lasker trap. Let me know when you, whenever you, you're ready, okay? Yeah, you're done, you're saying. Let's go back now to the board. I'm going to type that. It's our game number four. And this one is known as the Lasker trap. 
प्लीज जॉट डाउन प्रॉपरली इन योर नोट पैड गेम नंबर फोर इट इज द लास्कर ट्रैप दैट्स आर नेक्स्ट गेम सो लेट अस स्टार्ट व्हाट हैपन्स इन द लास्कर ट्रैप बिलीव इट और नॉट द ओपनिंग मूव इज डी फोर डी फाइव black will play white sorry will try the queen's gambit again this time as a variety we can throw up a big surprise a big surprise you can play the move e5 what a surprise this is and look at how the board actually looks here d4 d5 c4 e5 very important this Rayan you are right Emmanuel Lasker absolutely absolutely grandmaster emmanuel lasker right second world champion by the way you can say grandmaster can't you yeah you can second uh, world champion by the way second world champion you can make a note of that william steinitz was the first official one is it not so he is the second world champion emmanuel lasker now here is how the game continues free pawn so white will take that and you push the pawn to d4 okay you push the pawn to d4 stopping knight c3 move it's an important idea it is similar to the kind of king's gambit idea with the fast bear counter ga gambit so you push the pawn don't worry about the recapture yet you push the pawn so now you have pushed the pawn and your pawn down what happens then it's very likely that white will attack this pawn one more time so now this pawn is attacked two times and defended once well i have talked about counting this it's attacked twice and it's defended once so we have to play properly here we are already a pawn down here always remember that when there is a pawn on squares where a knight cannot block the check the bishop check becomes powerful you see that we have a pawn on d4 which means if there is bishop b4 check white won't play knight c3 to block the check at such on such occasions this bishop b4 check becomes very powerful and that's exactly what we are going to do we are going to play bishop b4 check powerful extremely powerful now obvious response by white will be bishop blocking it the reason why i'm saying he'll block it with the bishop is if he plays with the knight then this bishop becomes jailed the bishop will have no scope let's show it with different colors if you if he plays the move knight to d2 then this bishop here will be jailed the jailed bishop really has nowhere to go so after bishop b4 check you expect white to play bishop d2 and happens he plays bishop d2 more often than not and now my question is should we exchange the bishops or continue to play with initiative and tempo the answer is always play with initiative and tempo i'm a big fan of that a big fan of that always play with initiative and tempo meaning look at some forced sequence here you don't have to play bishop takes d2 and help our opponent with queen takes d2 or something like that or maybe knight takes d2 instead now the trap begins and you can play the move d takes e3 whoa this is powerful now white will be immensely happy here because white will tell himself that did my opponent just give me a free bishop did my opponent just blunder a piece already a pawn down and now he's blundering a piece what's up bishop takes b4 
and believe me black has fallen in white has fallen in the trap white has fallen in the trap this is so beautiful now one thing what you should remember is that the king is the only defender for the queen please observe the arrows that are drawn something that is very important strategically there is this open d file and the king is the only defender therefore now what you must do is try to distract the king away from the queen try to do that try to bring the 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 king away from the queen okay now we don't want to take the queen first because if we take the queen this trap doesn't work so what we will do here first is we will play e takes f2 check first and now you should remember that white will play king e2 simply because if white plays king takes f2 then the queen is free i'm sure you saw that variation guys so that's why king takes f2 is not a choice king e2 is the only choice after the move king e2 what we do is still we don't go ahead and take the queen again the reason is that white will just recapture and there will be no more threats so we do what is called as an under promotion now i want to make sure before i go further the under 1400 guys understand what is under promotion normally when you have the pawn reaching the 8th rank you would want a queen the most powerful piece you would want the queen but there are occasions when you want to have a piece lesser than the queen so when you promote to any piece below the rank of queen it's called under promotion maybe you get a rook a bishop a knight can you get a second king no so that's called under promotion remember under promotion so here the idea is you will under promote and get a knight i repeat you will get a knight for yourself so look at the options i have now i'm going to select knight because that is with a check it's very important guys you will under promote and you will take the knight again if the king moves away from the queen then queen is free is it not so obviously white will continue staying with the queen and so the move is king e1 now the trap is not over here remember there are there are a, a few tricks still to execute now that now there is no way of distracting the king away from the queen remember this point so far we tried sacrificing the pawn we tried the under promotion but the king stays with the queen so the king really doesn't move away and now if we cannot push the king away from the queen what is it that black can do is the it's the trap over that's it no now there is a very powerful move i want you to guess that in the chat let's see the under 1400 guys it's white to play a uh, black to play here and what can be the best move in this position black to play what is the best move here for black very very important guys what is that move
Oke. Okay. The king was pinned. The king was not pinned, right? I'll talk about it later. Okay, let's continue the game here. I think most of you have guessed the, the correct move here. It is queen h5, queen h4 check. Now mind you that this check is really powerful. It's because if white is careless, well of course white should play king to d2 here. But if white is careless and blocks the check with the pawn, then black has queen e4 check. And you all know that this is just plain and simple disaster. There is no better word for that. It's just disaster. So queen h4 check, you cannot play g3. Okay. And uh, therefore, I think after this check, he'll play king to d2. And now the way to continue is pretty interesting here. You play knight to c6, attacking the bishop. Let the bishop go back. And the moment the bishop goes back, you play bishop to g4, attacking the queen. Bishop to e2 to stop this. And now the rook d8 check, simply winning the queen. Maybe if the bishop blocks, you can take the queen. Guys, such a, these setups are very important. You must understand that. It's a very important setup. So now, after rook d8 check, the trap is complete. Now we are going to win, win white queen. And white's position is completely hopeless here. It's completely hopeless. We're winning. What if queen c1? Where queen c1? On what move? Queen c1. I don't know which move you're talking about, man. We will talk about the under promotion. Or we'll talk about the time. Hold on. Bishop g4 check, some people said, but I don't know which move they were talking about. If we play this move here, I think you are talking about this position. Then we will ourselves ruin the chance of playing well. We knew a trap and we blundered the trap. You don't go bishop g4 check in this position. Did somebody suggest that? He has knight f3 and then we don't get to play the under promotion. That doesn't work. What's up? Who was the one who suggested that? This bishop g4 is just bad. We won't win the queen. There is knight f3 and the pawn is also supporting it. It doesn't work that way. Alright, so let me uh, go ahead and replay the game. As usual, be ready with your notepad to jot down all the moves. Be ready. Monitor, you can go ahead and type the name here. Lasker Strap. This is the fourth game we are studying today, Lasker Strap. Let's go ahead and study it one more time. D4, D5, C4 and now for a change it is E5. D takes E4 accepting the free pawn. You push the pawn to D4, very important. E3 to attack the pawn and Bishop B4 check. Aggressive, when the pawn is on d4, the c3 square is taken. Bishop d2, now play with initiative and tempo. E, d takes e3, I repeat, d takes e3. Bishop takes b4, white will think that, hey, it's a free bishop for me. E takes f2, check. 
Remember, the king is only the only defender for the queen. So, king to e2. Under promotion. So, how will you write this move, guys? Somebody type that in the chat. How will you write this move? Guys, how will you write this move? The under promotion move. How do you write this move? Somebody, maybe the monitor can take that responsibility. Maybe the son can. How to write this under promotion move? In notation, in chess notation, how do you write it? F takes, how do you write it? Rayanch is right. F takes G1. Oh no, they are. They have made a mistake. What symbol are they missing here? There is one symbol that they are missing here, guys. It is F takes G1 is equal to knight check. Pooja ma'am, Pooja ma'am, I showed you why the king doesn't take the pawn. You're not attentive. If king takes the pawn, the queen is free. I told you repeatedly that, look at the diagram on the board, Pooja ma'am. If the king takes the pawn, white will lose the queen free. Pooja ma'am, did you, did you understand now? If white takes the pawn, black will take white queen for free. So that's not good. That's why the king has to stay with the queen. That's the whole point. That's why king e2. King has to support the queen. I hope Pooja ma'am has understood that now. The queen was free there. Okay, after king to, uh, to e2, you don't go for bishop g4 check. Remember, the under promotion, king goes back. Queen check. King to d2. Remember, if white plays g3, then there is queen e4 check. Winning the rook. Completely lost position. So, here there is king d2. Then there is knight attacking the bishop. Bishop goes back. Bishop g4. Bishop e2. And now you have rook to d8. Sealing the game once and for all. Very, very important. Guys, you can always watch the stream later. If you have missed anything at all, you can always do that. Guys, I told you that uh, this one, what if queen c1, what move is this queen c1? Why and when will white play queen c1? What move is queen c1? When the bishop attacks this, if you play queen c7, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Then that's very simple, right? I mean, there is this queen check. Skeever. Sure. Yeah. Let's calculate this. This is check. King stays with the queen. There is bishop check. If the bishop blocks it, then bishop takes, king takes, and queen is free. If the king goes back, then there is again rook d8. So just remember there are awesome things if there is queen c1. There are awesome things. If queen c1, it doesn't help. Does not help. I hope. You've understood that. At the start of this lecture, I said that uh, we we'll probably go through four games, but now we have enough time, five minutes left, and I will be able to now show you a beautiful, uh, you can say, knight smothered checkmate. Smothered checkmate with the knight early in the game. And this is one of my tournament games. So please make sure that you actually value it, guys. <laughs> it's, it's from one of my tournament games, okay? This is from the white perspective. So we have three black games today and two white games. 
So, this is game 5. It's a smothered mate in the Sicilian defense. It's knight in the Sicilian defense. This is a very nice game. Small, a miniature of course, but it's lovely. We just have about enough, enough time. E4, C5. Knight to f3, knight to c6, d4 the center break, c takes d4, knight takes d4, black played e5 attacking my knight. Guys make sure that this one is from this tournament game. So, it's not uncommon for such mistakes to happen. The smothered mate by the knight happens if your opponent is careless in the opening. And many a times it happens with the knight. The smothered mate idea was born for knights. So, Black played the move, uh, white sorry, the knight was attacked and I played knight to f5. And here black made, <laughs> you won't believe this blunder, black played the move knight ge7. Knight ge7. And now Prashna has a nice idea. Sir, if this is from your game, then why don't you call it a mere smothered mate trap? Sure. You can call it a mere smothered mate trap. You can call that. It is from my tournament game. I am entitled to call this a mere smothered mate trap. Prajna, you nailed it. You are right. You, we will call it a mere smothered mate trap. Guys, you see what my opponent has just done there? Do you see the next move? Let's ask Pooja ma'am. Pooja ma'am, white to play. Do you see the next move? That's checkmate. And how cute is that? Just imagine you are able to do such things in your games. Boy, I mean, wouldn't you be happy? Such quick finishes. You would love the game. <laughs> Purvesh is saying that's nice. Pooja ma'am. Checkmate. One move checkmate, Pooja ma'am. Check and mate. One move checkmate. I'm sure Pooja ma'am saw that. And yes, this one, it's cute. No doubt about it. Knight to d6. Look at the position of the king. Helpless, I'm telling you. Absolutely helpless. And for our opponent, we are going to do this. You know what I'm going to play now. <laughs> It's amazingly extraordinary. The moment I, you know, played this, my opponent could not believe what just happened there. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. So yes, we'll call it a mere, a mere smothered mate trap. You can teach it to others as well. Again, as usual, let me just go back. We will replay the game and then we'll stop this session. Guys, let's do it. E4. Then c5, knight to f3, knight to c6, please jot down the moves, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4 and black plays e5. The knight is under attack. And I chose not to go back to f3. Instead, I tried, I took my chances. Knight to f5. And now, a blunder. Knight ge7. Please write it properly. Knight 
Both the knights can come on e7 square. So knight g e7. Knight g e7. No problem, Pooja ma'am. No problem. Knight d6 is just a very simple checkmate. Oh, beautiful games we had today. The target was to study four games. But I'm happy we were able to play five. And we will continue this series next week as well. The opening traps will continue. I'm sure you're loving it. I am loving teaching you these traps. I'll show you some from my games more next week. Have a good weekend. All the best for Monday's tournament. We will now meet on Wednesday, right? Wednesday. Take care. Remember, the last date for submission is Tuesday, 12th January. Please submit your answer papers. Omkar sir's question paper. Remember, please submit your answer papers. All right. We will stop for now. Hopefully, you have jotted everything down properly. Study these games. Bye-bye.